Hey guys, how's it going? So tonight what I'm going to be working on is uh, the Dell G5 5590 that I did the opening box on here the other day. And what I plan to do today is to upgrade the OS drive and the uh, replace the storage drive. because uh, So it comes with a 240 gig NVMe SSD. I'm not sure what brand it is off the top of my head, but I think they're usually like Toshiba or, or, or something. But it's got so an M.2 NVMe SSD. 240 gigs and then as a one terabyte platter hard drive for storage but it's just awful with uh, the load times for games and so forth and you're not going to put that many games in 240 gigs before you run it out so then you have to load them on the hard drive and they're just they're not it doesn't load games fast enough so what we're going to be doing is uh, replacing both of those things and actually uh, I'm going to be using a SATA SSD as the OS drive because I, I was able to get a Samsung and it's easier to clone an OS into a Samsung drive using their software. Otherwise, you usually end up having to buy cloning software or find some other method to do it. And so, uh, I re well, for starters, I purchased this, uh, excuse me, 2 terabyte Samsung 860 QVO solid state drive. And so this will be enough to hold a bunch of games and other, uh, you know, music videos, whatever files I put on it. If I wanted to use this to record video or whatever, there'll be plenty of storage space built in where I don't have to carry around like an external storage of any kind. So we've got that. Um, I'll put up the uh, the read write rates on the screen, but usually they're about 500 to 550 megabytes per second with a standard SSD. So we're going to replace the platter drive with this, but we're going to then clone the OS onto it. And then I'm going to replace the existing OS drive, that 240 gig uh whatever brand it is nvme ssd this is one i just got off of a, a facebook market so i don't actually have um like the box or like specific information for it but it is a kingston hyperx predator 480 gig nvme ssd so this should be i don't know the exact speeds and again i'll try to find the information and put it on the screen uh before i finish the video but it should be usually they're like between two and three thousand megabits per second um, Linus Tech Tips did a here, video here recently though that demonstrated that really for the average user for like gaming and anything else you won't be able to tell the difference between these two things uh, for loading games, for loading your OS, for any of that stuff other than like extreme uh, data transfer rate intensive tasks uh, you can't tell the difference between these two things and a lot of times they said actually like a standard SSD will feel snappier for games and so forth than one of these which is a little bit strange but anyways what I'm going to do is we're going to take off, excuse me, uh, bottle the bottom panel of the laptop, which from what I can tell is pretty straightforward by looking at their manual beforehand. There's basically, I wish that they had uh, made it a little bit easier to get at the components because some laptops will have, you know, like a bottom plate where you can take off just like one portion and you'll get access to the hard drive. And then there might be one over here somewhere and you can get access to the RAM and that poof, you know, gives you easy access to upgrading your system. In this case, however, it doesn't look like it's too complicated. It's pretty much just, you see screw, screw, there's just screws around the outer edge, and then you supposedly can pry off the base plate and get access to all the components. And from what I looked at on the manual that I downloaded from their the Dell website, uh, this is the general region where they house the hard drive, and the M.2 drive is just like just slightly above that. So they should be in the same area over here. I just got to get this thing apart. So the next step will be to take the base plate off, and we'll, then we'll take out the drive. We'll do that step by step, and I'll show you how to replace the drive with a solid state drive, how to replace an NVMe drive. Uh, but at some point, like I said, I'm going to clone over my OS onto the Samsung drive. They have like their Samsung Magician cloning software, which only will work if you're using an, uh, a Samsung drive. You can't use it to clone from one, uh, you know, to another brand if you hadn't gone with that. So that's why you usually end up going with theirs. I think that's partly why they can charge a premium for their drives is because they make it so easy for you to do a lot of things that otherwise you'd end up having to buy a software package like a Cronus Perfect Disk or something to do that later. But Anyways, uh, I'll be right back. I'm going to go ahead and start taking these screws off of here. If you haven't already done so, please click the like button, uh, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment below. Thanks.
So this screw will not come out. Uh, it's like it's attached almost to this upper plate, or like I should say the base plate. This is really the bottom, not upper, but in, in reverse. But yeah, it's uh, it, it will not come out. However, it doesn't seem like it's stopping me from getting it out of there. Like I say, it just seems like it's kind of connected to this, whereas this one uh, came out pretty easily, but it was a longer screw than the other ones around the, the sides. So if you encounter that same problem, I don't have to tell you other than the fact that this screw seems to be a part of the base plate for some reason, and there's no indication of that until you go to try to take it out. But it, I mean, I can't pull it out, and it doesn't matter how many times I turn it, it doesn't really go any further than it goes now. But like I say, I started working on the edge here and I was able to lift it up and it comes right up with it. So just keep an eye out for that. I don't know what the deal is, but that is a thing. So be right back here, we'll get this bottom plate off. All right, so you see I've already kind of started lifting this up. I didn't need to use anything like a tool or anything to do it. It just got like my fingernails underneath there a little bit and it came right up. I don't have long nails or anything, so should be able to just kind of slowly edge your way around, prying it up, should come up. Now that I've said that one arrow of the screw will come up, maybe it's not going to cooperate now. So give me one second here and I'll continue from the other side. So yeah, I just pulled up on it a little bit here and it came right up. So I'm gonna take that up off there. And for some reason, like I say, that screw, yeah, I don't know if you can see that real good. Yeah, like a screw right there, it's got like a little collar around it. So you really can't remove that one. But the other one, as far as I can tell, did not have such a collar. So I don't really understand the thought process there of why that screw needs to be retained and the other one did not, uh, but that's how they got it done. So give me one second here, and we'll, we'll get this drive installation. So here's where the hard drive, the SATA hard drive is installed. You got the SATA connection here, and you put whatever drive, like this is like a little cage that they put around the drive. You can see in there though, this is like the underside of the drive platter for the hard disk drive. And then here, we've got ourselves a uh, second here, change the angle. We've got the M.2 drive enclosure it looks like they put a do a little piece of metal over it which is basically the equivalent of having some kind of a heat sink material on there so it can be cooled a little bit because those drives do run pretty hot that are just to protect it one thing or another but uh looks like there's one screw here holding that in place that covers m.2 drive and here's a screw wait a second here uh yeah, here we go get your better angle so here we've got one, oh, there's another one back there for the M.2, so one on that corner and one on this corner. And then there's one on each corner, maybe to hold the cage in place. And then I'll probably be able to pull this out and remove the hard drive cable. And then this basically has four screws on it, which will come out and then we'll put the cage on the new solid state drive, put the SSD back in, and then it should boot right up and detect that drive. So I guess the next thing to do is take these out and we can swap some things in but since this has got the os on it what i want to do first is replace this with my new samsung two terabyte qvo drive clone the os from this to the samsung drive and once that's done and it, we're able to boot from it and ensure that it's working i'll take this out replace it with the kingston drive which i got sitting right here i'll replace it with that and then that'll be just like additional storage and games and then this will become the, where the OS drive sets. So that's what I'll be doing. Stay tuned here, we're gonna go ahead and get this pulled out and we'll start the cloning process. Be right back. Okay, let me get this out of the box. Comes with a little manual. Pretty straightforward. If you have any questions on how to install a SATA drive in a desktop, you can ask in the comments section. Nice looking little drive. Two terabytes of VNAND storage. And this is normally your SATA power and your SATA data ports. But again, with this it'll be kind of one cable that does it instead of like in a desktop where you'd need two separate cables one to power it and one to transfer data through to the motherboard but give me a second here we'll get this removed and we'll swap them in mm, there you go hopefully you can see what i'm doing there pretty straightforward we're removing screws that's one
Oh, it looks like there's one on the other side over here too. Most of these things are designed to be fairly straightforward. I mean, sometimes it's not so easy. Like it depends on how easy it is to get the bottom plate off the laptop. And sometimes it's like they do a reverse orientation where everything's upside down. So all this would have been on the other side of the motherboard. Those are not real fun to deal with. And I almost don't even want to deal with it unless I absolutely can't stand the hardware that came with the system. All right, give me one second here. I want to make sure I've not missed anything. So I started pulling on this corner a little bit and this tag popped up. So I guess that's probably what you're really supposed to use to get a hold of it, or well, maybe not, because that's what's attached to the SATA cables. So you just kind of pull on that corner and it starts to loosen up. So we've got the SATA power and SATA data double connection here. Remove that, and successfully we've removed our kind of crappy Toshiba one terabyte hard drive, which I don't even know what the RPMs on this are, is, excuse me. They used to be like 5400 RPM that they'd give you pretty commonly 7200 rpm would have been a little bit nicer but the load times on games like banner lord for example was taking over a minute at least to load that game off of this thing which is in my view an unacceptably long wait time so we're replacing it all right so the next thing will be just to take off of here are these four screws to get this cage off of here and then we'll mount that to the ssd instead my cat's talking to us he's He's annoyed that I'm not paying attention to him and I'm doing this instead. I'm playing with him all day. But I'll be right back. I'm going to go ahead and get this off. Alright, so we removed the screws and voila. The cage has been successfully removed. Exposing the drive, which I'll set off to the side. And maybe I'll put it in an external enclosure or something. I've actually got one laying around here that'll let me use that with USB. So if I want an additional, uh, you know, terabyte of drive space, I could do that. Maybe I'll throw it on one of my desktops. Because you can hook up a laptop drive and a desktop using a, like they'll make like little drive cages kind of like this, but for a desktop to mount to somewhere inside of it. And you can cut it up that way, however you plan to do it. But I'll think of something, find some way to use it. Or maybe I'll put it in another laptop later or if I go to sell this machine in the future at some point, maybe I'll put it back in there and sell it with it. However, I, however it becomes useful, we'll find a way to do that. So now to replace it, we're just gonna basically reverse the process and that sits right in there nicely and the screw holes all line up. They're all kind of universally built so they can be interchangeable like this. And I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall the screws and put it back in the machine, pretty simple. Alrighty, next up we just take and reconnect this to the SATA connection. Which of course, there we go. Didn't want to cooperate right away, but now it's fine. And lay it back down in the same position where you found it. Lining up the different screw holes that you've got. And then just screw it back into place. There's three screws. Got them right here, these little silver bad boys that run there. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Alright, as you can see we're properly installed. All the screws are back where they belong. Drive is connected to the SATA cable and I've kind of tucked this thing back out of the way again. So the next thing we'll do will be, I'm not going to fully reinstall it, but I'm just going to kind of put the bottom plate back on the laptop and uh, then I could turn it back over and that way it's not uh, like these aren't potentially kind of grinding against this rubber mat that I've been, been using here. Uh, but that'll be the thing to do is turn it over and boot it up and I'm gonna download the Samsung Met Magician software they call it, but it's just like a disc cloning application. And I'll use that to copy these files onto here. I will make this the master boot drive in the BIOS and from there, I don't know why that suddenly got blurry, sorry. Uh, but from there, I can boot from that, then I can remove this drive, replacing it once again with our Kingston HyperX Predator drive with more storage space. Maybe a little faster, maybe not, but it won't be noticeable anyway. And this, actually, I've got an external USB-C uh, 
NVMe drive enclosure that I could throw this into. Give me a second here, I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna start cloning this OS. So something to keep in mind when you first boot it up is it's saying that it just reads the C drive and it doesn't notice any of the drives. But if you go down here and you right click on your start menu, and then you click on disk management, you see it's offering now, it says I need to initialize a disk before Logical Disk Manager can access it. So it says it's selected disk zero. I'm not gonna change any of that good stuff there. Because we're just gonna let it initialize it anyway. Shouldn't take it too long. Maybe. Okay, I think it actually did initialize it, and I have to tell it. So you right click on it. So this is how you can tell is it says it's about about 1900 gigabytes. It's always a little bit lower than uh, the drive I'll actually say it is, but it's about two terabytes. So we're gonna tell it new simple volume. Click next. Next again. And unless you wanna change the drive letter to something else, I'll just leave it as D. Uh, as it goes the fans. You can choose to name it something if you want, but I'm not gonna leave it as NTFS. You can always change that to something else if you need to for some reason. The XFAT is usually used for like thumb drives or removable storage. NTFS is new technology filing system that's usually used on most common drives. So we'll just go ahead and leave that alone. Finish that out. And now, so we have our new volume. Close out of that. And now in my computer, I have my OS drive and my D drive. So the next thing for you to do is to download the software from Samsung and tell it to clone this onto this. Then I will be removing the original NVMe drive and replacing it with the Kingston drive and then telling the BIOS that I want to boot from this drive instead. So I'll be right back once I've downloaded the software. All right, so we've downloaded our Samsung data migration software. That's what it's called. I thought it was called uh, the Magician software, but that does something different. So search, Google search for Samsung data migration software and you should be brought to the Samsung website where you will be greeted by a download for this file. It's only about 60 megabytes, but amazingly it took it like 20 minutes to download. There's something going on with their site because I can do other things with my network just fine that don't, uh, you know, it's not my network that's taking it so long. It's something going on. Okay, so apparently we have a Hynix NVMe SSD, 256 gigabyte for our OS drive. And we're going to select, so basically it's asking me what I want to take, what drive I want to transfer from and what drive I want to transfer to. So we're going to transfer from our Hynix drive and we're going to select our target drive, which we only have one on the drive in the system, Samsung SSD 860 qvo 2TB. Uh, again, this will only work if you're transferring to a Samsung drive. They don't let you use it for anything else, which is really nice of them. So, you know, this is why I use Samsung some drives though. This software is really good and really easy to use. Other methods of transferring uh, an OS to another drive are not as straightforward and usually you end up having to pay for them and like you get to use it like one or two times then they'll make you buy another license. So this is not so bad. So I've told it what I want to do. I'm gonna tell it to start. And it's gonna say your computer will be shut down after the data migration in 20 seconds. When cloning starts, all data on the target drive will be deleted, which again, we don't have anything on it anyway, so that's okay and cannot be recovered. Also, targets on the source drive that are open cannot be cloned. So make sure that you close basically any files before you start the cloning process. That's cool. We don't have anything running. So to start. So it's gonna go ahead and do that, which depending on the speed of the drives in question could take quite a while or it can be pretty quick. Like if you're transferring from a standard hard drive to a new Samsung SSD, for example, it will take a bit longer because the read rate on the regular Platter drive is not very fast, but in this case, we're transferring from a fast NVMe drive to a fast SSD, so this should be a pretty quick process. I'll be back here in a minute when it's done. Just to show you how fast it's going, it's only been gone for about, about three minutes and it's already at 75% done. It's tra transferring the data at 203 megabytes per second, so it's not gonna take it too long to do this. It was estimating like another five minutes, but I don't think it's gonna take it that long. So it's a pretty, pretty expedient process to clone when you don't have, I mean, there wasn't much on there. There was the operating system on there and like one or two programs, like you know, I got GPU-Z on there. Uh, Steam is installed to that drive, uh, you know, CPU-Z, some very small things. So pretty much, you know, it says that there's a, that drive is 
using 59 out of 221 available gigabytes. So it's it's not that much to transfer, but it's doing it pretty quick. You see just in the last couple seconds, it's going up 1% every couple seconds. So it'll be done here in a second. Okay, so it's shut down. Next thing I wanna do is I wanna remove the existing NVMe OS drive. So this is the smallest NVMe drive I've ever seen. I know that they made them in different sizes, but that's really tiny. It just comes out with the first notch. And let me see if I can turn here. Not too far. But you can see that there's like other mounting points down here. And so like there's a little mounting bracket underneath this. Let me see if I can get you a better look at what I'm talking about. All right, so you see what I'm getting at here. This is a really tiny little drive. And then they got this little mounting hardware here. And it looks to me like once you take this off, remove the screw you can push this little bracket forward and remove it and then probably put it back here and slide it underneath these two points because the length of this new drive is uh, as you can see it's gonna be out to about you know that point there so that's what I'm gonna be doing oh, sorry it's defocused but I'm gonna be removing this and try to remove this little hardware here move it back here install the new drive then I'll go ahead and get into the BIOS tell it to boot from this and we'll make sure everything is working correctly. So I'll be right back. All right, to remove this thing here, you just kind of pull on it, it pops right out. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put it in here underneath these other ones. And now that just sticks right into place. No problem. So next up, I should be able to install my Kingston drive. And yep. Lines up nicely. Take a second here and get that screw. It's gonna be a little bit pain in that probably. I hate tiny screws like this. It's such a pain in the ass. Like they're hard to get a hold of. I might. Uh, I got them. The other screwdriver is magnetic. That's something you should definitely invest in here. To deal with little tiny screws like this is get your hands on something magnetized. There we go. All right, so that's installed. And then you're gonna go ahead and replace the cover back on top of it. It's got a little piece of thermal material on it, this blue stuff here, which basically just acts, it's just like thermal tape. But uh, NVMe drives tend to put out a pretty good amount of heat. I think I got this backwards actually. Yeah, there we go. Wasn't quite lining up. There we go. Go ahead and screw this back into place. And that'll be that. This thing seems to give a little bit better torque on some of these screws just to tighten it fully. There you go. That other one's good because it's magnetized, but it doesn't get the same level of torque. So, those are on there. We've removed our tiny little Hynix drive, replaced with the Kingston HyperX Predator. Next thing to do is to see if we can get into the BIOS and tell it to boot from our new replacement OS drive. Be right back. All right, so you can see it's giving me the option of the Windows Boot Manager using the Samsung SSD 860 QVO 2TB. Hopefully this will allow me to boot directly from that drive. I'm gonna have to fiddle around with what order it says it wants to do things in. But previously, uh, to get into the BIOS on this laptop, you just hit F2. Like the moment you hit the power button, just start spamming the F2 key after that and it should let you in. 
but you choose your boot sequence and you should be able to come in here and see that it's selected that. So I'm going to go ahead and, I mean, it didn't really apply anything, but I'll go ahead and tell it to apply. I didn't really make any changes. And then I'm going to exit. And let's see if it wants to get into our OS. Oh, please. One second. Well, it booted up the Windows. So, I mean, the other drive that used to contain the OS, well, I'll just pick it up. The drive that contained the OS is sitting right here. So clearly the cloning process has worked and we are into our new OS. Back into Windows. That sort of thing. Oh, I guess the whole time I'm sitting there wondering why my mouse wasn't working. I thought it was just because I was in the BIOS, but it's because I didn't plug in the receiver. Now again, like we did before, to ensure that our NVMe drive is working. Yeah, it looks like it already picked it up. I didn't have to tell it. See, remember last time we had to go to Disk Manager and ensure that that was going to work, but this time it seems like it's just automatically detected it, so that's cool. Uh, sometimes it'll do that, sometimes it won't, I guess, but we've got our 1.81 terabytes. I don't know why this thing keeps wanting to refocus. I apologize. I don't know why the camera wants to refocus all the time. It's quite irritating, but we've got our OS drive, Samsung QVO, and it says it's called 512. That must have been what uh, the previous owner just named it, and it still retained that. This is 512, but 400 and roughly 450 gigabytes NVMe SSD from Kingston HyperX. All right. If you guys have any questions on how we went through this, please ask them in the comment section below. Don't really do anything mind blowing today, but I don't know what it's asking you about. That's something from Dell. Anyways, if you have any questions, ask them in the comment section below. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, uh, share the video if you feel like it, and please subscribe to the channel. I'm attempting to hit a thousand subscribers by the end of 2020. And we're a little over halfway there. I'd like to say thanks also to everybody who's been subscribing so far. You're helping me push the channel in the direction I want it to go, so thank you very much. And I'll be sure to see you guys soon. Have a great one. Bye. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.